In this Circuits of the Past video, we'll be exploring the old Monza banking and the Pirelli track. As we go, I'll be given some information about the things you see along the way and a history of the Monza circuit. Before we begin, though, we've two people to meet. The first is Hermann Lissemeyer, the founder of the Circuits of the Past website and YouTube channel. He lives in the Netherlands, but explores racing circuits all across the world. The second is Yuri Bruschi from Italy. He's a fan of the Circuits of the Past website and knows the Monza circuit extremely well. He showed Herman around the heritage of the track. Yuri also has a YouTube channel with old Italian motorsport videos that's well worth a look. Me, I'm just Simon Smith and I voice the videos, all in the comfort of my own sofa. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel called Higher Plane Games that does include some racing games if you're interested. Here you see Herman and Yuri exploring the famous old Monza banking by bicycle. What you're seeing here is actually the second version of the Monza banking that opened in 1955. The original Monza oval was demolished in 1938, but you'll hear more about that later. Here the banking crosses the abandoned Pirelli track, which we'll talk about more later too. True to form, Herman has a story to tell about the filming of the Pirelli track, and that took place right in the tunnel below this point. The Monza circuit opened in 1922 as a combination of a high-speed banked oval and a road circuit. Both could be used together or separately. The length of the combined circuit was exactly 10 kilometers, which equates to 6.2 miles. During a huge reconstruction of the circuit that started in 1938, the original banking was demolished. The idea was to make Monza a pure road circuit. However, in the 1950s, the circuit bosses wanted to return back to its original concept of a combination of road circuit and high banked oval. In 1955, the new Monza layout opened again with a new oval, almost exactly on the same site as the original. To give the circuit also the exact length of 10 kilometers again, they introduced the famous Parabolica corner. It's almost as if Spielberg saw it coming. <laughs> Now we leave the Monza Oval for a while to explore the infield and famous tunnel where the current Formula One circuit crosses the high banked oval. And here you see the bottom of the banking from a tunnel for pedestrians. There is also a storage underneath the banking. Here you can see Herman points his camera through a window, but unfortunately it's too dark to see what's inside. My guess is that it's Ferrari's H crew for strategy calls given their luck of late. However, Herman now has a new camera with night vision, so next time he'll show you exactly what scary and creepy things are hidden in the storage underneath the Monza banking. I can only imagine the future adventures of Herman trying to explain what he's doing with one of those to the police. Here we have a nice look at the structure of the banking. Now we're back on the Monza banking where Yuri and Herman will continue their bicycle ride around the oval. But before they do that, they first have a try to climb it. If I fail, I will not put it on the end of this. <laughs> oh, this is also a good view. Herman joked that he would not put this footage on the internet if he fails to reach the top of the banking. However, Yuri is far more experienced in climbing this banking, so he took Herman's GoPro camera and shows you exactly what it looks like from the top of the banking. Don't try this at home. Yeah. Thank you. 
il serraglio non si vede there is some wood Ma. ok marcia il postazione e questa è la scari possiamo vederla e qua continua il banking di qua e di là bene so after the climbing of the banking our Everest conquering duo continue their way by bicycle as they pedal away. I'll sit here comfy in my chair and I'll tell you a little bit more about the 1955 banking. The combination of the road circuit and the oval was only used three times for Formula One Italian Grand Prix. They were in 1956, 1960 and 1961. The Monza banking became most famous afterwards when it was used for the 1966 Formula One movie Grand Prix. After Formula One abandoned the Monza banking, it was also declared too dangerous for other racing series too. The last time the full circuit was used was in the 1969 edition of the Thousand Kilometres of Monza. Since then, the old high banked oval has been left abandoned. When the Monza circuit needed to improve its safety in the 1990s, they had to fell trees to create bigger runoff areas. So they came up with a plan to demolish the disused banking and use the space to replant trees, just like they would do with a certain old Hockenheim in 2002. But after a massive protest, including many Formula One drivers, they cancelled their plans. Since 1978, the old Monza Oval has been used once a year for the Monza Rally, but it only uses the lowest part of the banking. The rest of the year, it's just a memory from the past, which can be explored legally, just like Herman and Yuri did here. At the end of the back straight, Yuri and Herman made a stop at the chicane, which was built there in 1965. So let's see how long we can stay on top of the banking. <laughs> When they continued their way into the southern banking, Herman joked, let's see how long we can stay at the top of the banking. However, Herman discovered that it was not that easy to stay on top for a very long time. Yuri did a serious attempt to keep his bicycle at the top, but then this happened. Ragazzi, qui sto rischiando di brutto. Che se volo giù in bici di qua, sto facendo mezza pedalata, perché sennò col pedale di sinistra, Stacking it down the bank in there was Yuri basically creating a meme for 2020 as a year. <laughs> Flatten that curve. After Yuri licked his wounds, they continued their journey on the southern banking. Over on the website www.circuitsofthepast.com you can read the full story about the Monza Oval. We've arrived at the end of the public part of the banking. Here the entrance has been blocked by a fence. If this fence wasn't here, you could actually enter the current racetrack. I would have loved to have seen a two bike race between Herman and Yuri yeah. and the current circuit, but alas, um, they can well, only cause trouble cool if it was a track day. <laughs> Besides, driving on the abandoned banking by bicycle was certainly already dangerous enough. Yeah. After the ride on the oval, Herman and Yuri drove to the current circuit. At that moment, they didn't realise that they used the legendary Florio connection from the 1930s. Later, Yuri went back to the Monza circuit to film the old Florio circuit. Here's a link to that video. Now you see Herman and Yuri underway off to the famous Parabolica corner. 
As you can see, to get round Parabolica on bike requires some Tony Hawk or Dave Mirror skills. All that's missing is a half pipe. <coughs> oh. Closed. Yeah, closed. Ah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. The Parabolica Corner was introduced in 1955 when the new Munza Banking also opened. Just like the original 1922 track, they wanted the length to be a combined road circuit and oval of exactly 10 kilometers. By the way, Parabolica is Italian for parabolic. But some lazy reporters will tell the audience that the Southern Banking is also the old Parabolica Corner, probably not aware of the meaning of the name Parabolica. I used to think that it was called Parabolica because you needed a huge pair of bollocks to drive through it. Actually, there's no old Parabolica corner. The current Parabolica is the same as in 1955 and it's still on exactly the same spot. Only the runoff has changed slightly over the years, moving from sand trap to concrete. Or, if your name's Alex Peroni, sausage curb. After the Parabolica, they went on to the Ascari chicane. Porta del Seraglio. The Lesmo Corners and the Roggia Chicane. Then it was time to explore the abandoned section of the Pirelli track. The Pirelli track was built during the 1938 reconstruction of the Monza circuit. It was built to be a test track for the Italian tyre manufacturer Pirelli. The layout made use of part of the road circuit and a new loop on the infield. However, because of the outbreak of World War II, the Pirelli track was never actually used for its original purpose. Today the infield section is left entirely abandoned, but can still be explored by nostalgic fans just like us. In 2016, the abandoned Pirelli track was back in the spotlight when they came up with an alternative layout for the World Superbike Race. The new section would cut off the Curva Grande and make use of part of the old Pirelli track. A new chicane would then bring it back onto the current track. Rumours circulated on the internet that old F1 boss Bernie Ecclestone was also interested in using this layout, but for Formula One. A massive protest under the slogan Save Curva Grande broke out, but the idea disappeared just as quickly as it came. Here you see Yuri and Herman follow the old Pirelli track by bicycle. This newer asphalt road underneath the banking follows the old Pirelli layout. Driving downhill, the speed increases considerably. But what Herman didn't know was that in the tunnel underneath the banking is cobblestones, just like the original surface of the Pirelli track. He was surprised when he saw them, and I have just one word to say. Ouch. Yuri knew about the cobblestones and braked earlier so that he could build up his speed for the slope upwards afterwards and catch Herman back up again. At least the Pirelli track was finally getting some racing at long last. The tour around the old Pirelli track ends up at the current Ascari chicane. For more details about the Pirelli track, you can read the Monza article over on the website circuitsofthepast.com.
After the exploration of the old Monza layouts, Herman got a guided tour through the pit building of the current Monza circuit. The stone grandstand that you see here was built in 1940 as part of a great pre-war renovation. However, after the war, it needed a huge overhaul again before it could be finally used for its purpose. The building today is not only just a grandstand, but it houses a restaurant inside too. Inside the pit building, Herman visited the press room and the control room too. They also let him make a walk of fame through to the podium. So that's the compilation of Herman and Yuri's exploration of the Monza circuit. For more information about Monza, visit the website www.circuitsofthepast.com. There you can also download a free ebook about seven abandoned racetracks that you can visit legally. For now though, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video from another iconic circuit from the past.